Welcome back, this is Moreland Engineering and we're going to keep going on the 350. So we've done a couple of things. We have we got rid of that blend at the back. We have adjusted these trim curves to help help hug the surface a little better. And then we added a couple guides to our surface. So that helps it that helps guide a different radius down the middle than at the edges. For example, if we get rid of those, you can see it kind of does its own thing. It just it uses the curvature of each surface to tell it how sharp to make it. But we can adjust that row value on either end and in the middle. We can add more guide curves if we want to constrain it more tightly but this looks pretty good uh, we got rid of that blend at the back because in this video we're going to start tackling the sides let's leave that on and let's get us a front here Actually, I don't like that. I always like working with full size, full width surfaces wherever I can. So let's. This is a bridge curve. We were starting from a straight line in the middle out to a guide curve, but I think we should just go all the way across with it. Boom. Now we've got a nice big bumper. Let's get rid of that. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. And we can throw an X form on that because it's our favorite tool. Although this is this is a very straight surface for any car. Let's bend it a little bit. Get the belly. Actually, we're going to go back and shrink this down to the size that it needs to be. Give us a little bit of overlap. Yeah. Drag that out a little bit, shove that back in. Ooh, bottom. Yay, there we, there we go. That's what we're looking for. I think we're going to have to add a little bit of math here. Close enough. And what are we going to do with this? Well, we don't really need to work on this right now because we're going to come back and do the these uh, wheel bulges, front and rear, and then tie it all together. But for now, let's just work on the on the side. So we've got a side sketch and a top sketch. And if we project that, so we've we've traced this this body line on the door here and here. You can see it over here. It's that crease right there. We've traced it from the side. We've traced it from the top. So if we project those lines, we now end up with this. Let's turn our sketches off. Well, you know what? Let's do it again first. Going to do the same thing here and here. Now let's turn our sketches off. So, now we have a pretty good guide that follows 
the body in three dimensions. It's not perfect, but again, we, we really need it to be close, not perfect. And from there, let's eyeball this guy. Again, we're not looking to do too much. We just we just want to cover this little patch in here. I think we can do. Let's just throw a straight surface in there. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Now it's a simple surface. We don't have a lot of control here. We could add tangency. We could put surfaces to to tie it to, but. All right, and that is well below the surface, so we missed the mark on our guide curves. That's okay. We can fix that. This happens frequently on corners because your eye is drawn to the, the middle of that radius. But in reality, what you're modeling is not the middle of the radius. You're trying to model the virtual intersection of where the surfaces would meet if they were perfectly sharp. And so you kind of have to guess at how far away from the middle of the visual radius that is. Let's see if that gets us. That's better. It's a bit better close enough it matches at the ends and that's all we really need uh, because we're going to turn off these sketches and we'll get back into manipulation now this is quite a complex surface because we started out with so many control points each of those guide curves was a spline with a lot of control points so when you project them together the spline points basically double uh, and now you make that into a 3d surface and everything gets tremendously complex so we're going to keep proportional on we're not going to uh, try and manipulate it too discreetly like we did before this is a weird surface because it's kind of convex and concave at the same time it's got a bit of dip here but a bulge at the bottom it's going to be hard to match that all the way along. We're probably going to end up having to add some guide curves here, but for now let's let's see how far we can get. It's not terrible. And misses at the ends, but we're going to probably cover that up with the uh, tire bulges anyway, or the, the wheel well bulges. So now we've got to do basically the same thing at the bottom, but let's do that a little differently. I think we can go back to our previous method of extrude and manipulate. But, hey look, straight extrusion is surprisingly not that far off. Again, this extrusion is made from a, a spline with a lot of control points, but we can kind of dumb it down. We don't need these surfaces to be matched perfectly so as we manipulate this it might wander from the other surface but that's okay because we're going to come back and blend it anyway Add a couple of degrees here we're going to need to just wobble this in because the rocker's the same thing we don't really need to capture the entire curvature this surface this single patch is not going to wrap all the way under the car but if we tighten up the ends and get most of that acceleration captured, then we're achieving our goal.
you know, we've wandered a good bit. And I think we need to add a couple more control points here because we, we kind of want to pull this back in some and push this out. There we go. See, we're starting to starting to capture more and more of the surface as we manipulate those points. If we pull this end out, again, this is going to be in the blend, but if we can point it in the right direction, it will make our life a lot easier as we go into the blend. Pull that out, tuck it in. And this is proportional, right? This proportional setting means as we move this, if we move this an inch, it's maybe a half inch here and a quarter inch here. So by picking which knot points you're changing, you can you can change the curvature very gradually without having to manipulate every little point along the way. These face blends almost never make it to the finished product, but they're really useful for getting your head around the uh, intersections of two surfaces or a surface and an edge, how they come together. Let's just do something simple here. Yeah, good example. So you can see here this uh, this blend wants to just warp at the end because the two surfaces actually they invert a little bit. They go they, the transition between them changes, but that's okay. We're going to chop all that off. Anyway, we've got something that looks a little bit like a body line. I think we need to manipulate this a little more. Add a couple of degrees to it so that we can pull this down, pull this out, tighten her up. But then capture this con concavity. With the proportional one, you can actually grab a single point and it'll drag everything else around. So it, it does help when you've got a million points to deal with. Otherwise, you just end up with sharp points in the in the surface that you just can't fix, which ends up you just have to start over. So you really don't want that. Let's see if we blew up our blend. Yep. turn this off and you can see why surfaces just don't touch anymore out here so uh, we can kind of fix that we can sort of fix it for now again the ends of the surface don't really matter because they're just going to get hacked off so we kind of just need the surface to be shaped However, we need it to make the blend work. We might not be able to make this stick anyway. There we go. So, we fixed the end just to make the blend work. And now, got part of a side. Next we'll cover the wheel arches, but that's going to take some time, so we're going to break that into a different video.